In this section, we're going to see capacitance voltage characteristics of the ideal MOS capacitor or MOS diode. When we say capacitance, in fact, this is not a DC capacitance. We're talking about a small signal capacitance where let's say if we apply a DC potential across the MOS cap and on top of it, if you apply a delta V, which is a change in the potential, then we have a charge present in the semiconductor due to the DC potential and then we have a delta Q that comes because of this delta voltage we apply. The capacitance that we are looking for is actually the delta Q over delta V. In fact, this particular concept was discussed when we found the depletion capacitance and the diffusion capacitance in PN junction diodes as well. To understand this concept better, I'm going to take the charge distributions from the previous sections, the accumulation mode, depletion mode, and inversion mode to see the capacitance values or characteristics in those modes of operation. This is how the volume charge density distribution looks in accumulation, in depletion, and inversion modes. So I've shown the charge distribution for a DC voltage that is applied, let's say a constant voltage. And now when we actually give a delta V increase in the potential, what would happen? So in this case, if you see, because of small delta V increase, there will be a delta Q that gets added on the metal. So let me show it here. And how much ever delta Q comes here, there will be exactly that much delta Q here present. Now we can say that this minus delta Q and we have here plus delta Q. Now this delta Q delta Q is actually separated by a distance of T ox. So we can say this plus Q and minus Q are separated by this distance with a epsilon of oxide. So we can say the capacitance here would be C is equal to epsilon ox over T ox. Epsilon ox is epsilon R oxide times epsilon naught. Now, if you want capacitance, we have to multiply this with area. If you want just the capacitance per unit area, this itself is the formula. So the capacitance in accumulation mode would be epsilon ox over T ox. Now, when we go to depletion mode, when we apply a delta V on top of this DC potential due to which we have this condition. When we apply delta V, we get this plus delta Q. And this delta Q will be accommodated by increasing the depletion width where we get this minus Q here. This is the minus delta Q. Now, if you talk about the capacitance here, this positive charge and this negative charge are separated by a distance of T ox plus XT. But in this case, of course, the epsilon is not same in oxide and silicon. They're different, which means a plus Q and minus Q are separated by a distance of this much with the two different materials in between. In that case, we can write this as two capacitances in series. And this concept is very well discussed in electromagnetics. So I'm taking here this is like a capacitor here and another capacitor here in series. So there is minus Q here, there is plus Q here. This capacitance, we know how much it is. This is nothing but C ox prime. That is in fact this value. So we can say this is C ox prime. And this value is nothing but the depletion capacitance value. So this capacitance, we can say this is C depletion prime. So let me write what is the total capacitance here that is given by. So when two capacitances are in series, the equivalent capacitance is 1 over C is equal to 1 over C ox prime. This is also prime plus 1 over C depletion prime. Now C ox prime, we know what is the value. I'm going to write what is C depletion prime. So C depletion prime will be equal to epsilon SI because this distance is actually inside the semiconductor. So epsilon SI over 
dx d. This is the depletion width of this depletion region. So this is the depletion capacitance value inside the semiconductor. But the overall capacitance, if you want to find, it's actually a series connection of this oxide capacitance plus the depletion capacitance inside the semiconductor. So we have seen the capacitance value in accumulation mode, capacitance value in depletion mode. This is the resultant capacitance. When we come to inversion mode, when a capital V is applied and we apply a small delta V, then we get plus delta Q here, plus delta Q. This time, the delta Q cannot be accommodated in the depletion region as we have discussed. So this should be accommodated in the inversion region as we are in the inversion mode because the depletion has reached its maximum depletion width. We get this value. This is minus delta Q. Now if you see the plus delta Q and minus delta Q are separated by T ox and this material has a epsilon of epsilon ox. So we can say the capacitance in inversion mode is equal to which is epsilon ox over T ox. So this is nothing but C ox prime because this is capacitance per unit area. So by taking these capacitance values, I'm going to draw the CV characteristics here. In x-axis, we're taking the gate potential, Vg. Now for ideal MOS cap, at zero, the MOS cap is in equilibrium. And when Vg is negative, we are in accumulation mode. In accumulation mode, the capacitance is C ox prime. So I'm going to take C ox prime here. That will be value C ox prime which means the CV characteristics I'm actually drawing here are actually capacitance per unit area changing with respect to potential. If you want actual C, we have to multiply everything with the area. Now, as we get into positive voltages, we will enter into depletion modes. When we see depletion mode, when two capacitances are in series, the formula is like this, which means we can say as depletion width is increasing, as we increase the voltage, as depletion width is increasing, C dep decreases. And when we have two capacitances in series, the smallest one dictates the overall value of the capacitance. And hence, the C depletion as it is decreasing, as XD is increasing, the overall capacitance also decreases. So I would say this capacitance would decrease as we increase potential in the positive direction. So the capacitance value would decrease decrease. Once we start moving from weak inversion to strong inversion, what happens is this capacitance value increases and it should reach to C ox prime value, which is this value, C ox prime value, when we enter into strong inversion, the inversion mode in fact. So this characteristics should change and become like this in inversion mode. So we can say in accumulation mode, the capacitance value is C ox prime. I'll put here so that it is very simple to understand just by looking at the curve. And in inversion mode also, we have this value, which is C ox prime. But in depletion mode, we have the value as two capacitances in series, capacitance values in series. One is C ox prime, the other is C depletion prime. And of course, there is a very important concept here that is, when we apply a small delta V, which means that delta V is associated with how fast we are changing that delta V, which means there is a time factor also involved in this. So how fast we change the delta V so that this delta Q gets accommodated in the MOS capacitor. So what we observe is when we change this delta V very slowly, you actually get this characteristics. So what does that mean? Which means when you change this delta V a bit fast, then in fact, we're not going to get this characteristics. The characteristics would look something like this. It will look exactly the same in accumulation and it looks exactly the same in depletion as well. But when you enter into inversion, the capacitance value remains at the minimum value, at the minimum value and it doesn't actually become C ox prime. And in fact, that is a very surprising uh, thing here. So let's understand why 
the capacitance doesn't become Cox prime. In fact, why does it stay here? For that, we need to understand how is this inversion charge created in the first place. Only then we can understand when we apply delta V, when delta Q comes here, why is this delta Q not coming within the given time because we are adding time factor here. So, uh, to be very clear, let me mark this. This curve is low frequency curve, indicating that delta V was changed very slowly. So, hence this is low frequency. Now, we know that this is high frequency, high frequency curve. So, we have to go back to basically understand how this inversion charge is created. So, let me take the MOS capacitor structure here. Let's say this MOS cap is somewhere in depletion region and we are increasing the potential here so that it gets into inversion. At that moment, when we increase the potential, where does this inversion charge, the electron concentration come near the silicon dioxide silicon interface? Where does it come from? So if you look at this, when we increase the potential, then the electric field will increase here, which means the equilibrium carrier concentration would be disturbed because electric field would increase the depletion region width. Now in that case, when thermal equilibrium or equilibrium is disturbed, there are mechanisms like generation and recombination that would be disturbed. As a result, there would be thermal generation here due to which electron hole pairs will be generated. So let me conceptually put here that electron hole pairs will be generated but because we disturb the equilibrium value there then the thermal generation rate would make sure that electron hole pairs are generated but if you observe here electric field is in this direction from gate to semiconductor. So when electric field is in this direction the electrons would be pulled towards the surface and holes would be pushed away from the surface of silicon to silicon dioxide. As a result, this thermally generated electrons would actually come and form the inversion region here. That is how we were actually getting the inversion charge. That was coming because of thermal generation in the depletion region and the present electric field is going to separate the electron hole pairs and gets the electrons which we were calling the inversion charge. Now coming back to the point, as when we change the delta V very fast, the thermal generation will take some time to actually generate this electron hole pairs and then the electric field separates them and then it comes and forms a layer near the silicon silicon dioxide surface. But if you change the delta V very fast, this process cannot happen in such a way you actually get inversion charge. I'm going to redraw this structure here, but without the plus and minus delta Qs. Now let's say due to capital V, the DC voltage that is applied, we have this situation. When I say DC, which means you have applied and given enough time so that you actually have the inversion charge present. Now suddenly if you apply this plus delta Q, let's say, then you are supposed to be getting some delta Q in the metal side, in the metal side, let's say delta Q. But then as we discussed just now, if this delta V changes very fast with respect to time, there wouldn't be enough time for this thermal generation and separation to actually happen to accommodate the addition of delta Q in the inversion region. Instead, of course, this delta Q should be accommodated. So the way it gets accommodated is actually by increasing the depletion width, in fact, increasing the depletion width here. Hence, if you see, the capacitance would be nothing but two capacitances in series here. One is this capacitance, which is C ox prime, and the other one is here. This is C depletion prime. Of course, this is for XD max. So which means the capacitance that we see here, let me write this C prime because they are in series, which is C ox prime plus C 
depletion prime. This is for x d max. Make a note this is for x d max distance. So now if you look at this, for low frequency you have Cox prime and for high frequency we have this capacitance. So let me write this. This is low frequency and this is for high frequency. So let me put this. This will be the capacitance. C ox prime, C depletion prime of X D max. When you see the C V characteristics, there is a lot of information that you actually get out of this. And in fact, to understand this better, there are previous gate questions which are solved in this channel itself in a different playlist. Please go through the problems and see how you understand this. And before that, there might be a question on, let's say, what is this low frequency in fact? How much is low frequency and how much is high frequency? So in fact, you'll be surprised. The low frequency here is somewhere around 10 hertz, which is way, way, way low frequency, which means when you apply something higher than, you know, let's say 100 hertz or something, you're not actually going to get the inversion charge dynamically. Then if MOS cap cannot do that, then how is MOSFET working in such a high frequencies like 3 gigahertz kind of CPU operations? We'll discuss that when we get to MOSFET. MOS cap cannot do that, but MOSFET can do that. So we'll discuss that in detail when we discuss MOSFET. In fact, if you see here from the CV characteristics, we can figure out where the threshold voltage is. You see here, this is accumulation. It enters into depletion and then it enters into inversion. So which means the threshold voltage should be somewhere here where the onset of strong inversion happens. This is a very important point to note that threshold voltage would be somewhere very close to this point where the low frequency and high frequency curve actually splits. To summarize, VG negative for ideal MOS cap, you're in accumulation mode. This is accumulation mode. And when the capacitance keeps reducing, that is the depletion mode of operation. And in inversion mode, we have two categories. One is low frequency, where you have the capacitance, max capacitance. And in high frequency, you have the min capacitance. So in this CV characteristics, we have max capacitance which is C ox prime and min capacitance which is capacitances in series one is C ox prime and the other one is C depletion prime at X D max depletion width distance. If you find this lecture helpful please do press the like button and share it with your friends on social media and if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe to get the weekly upload messages. Thank you.